morning, friends. Welcome to the edition of the Wagner Wire, the Masters edition, on Texas Sports Unfiltered. I'm your host, Adam Wagner, with my co-host and color analyst, Justin the Smash Simmons. It's a we pleasure welcome to be here. you on this great morning on April 14th as we follow Tiger Woods, Sunday Tiger, through the Masters with his record-breaking shit. I forgot what is it 28 cut <laughs> damn it i had it I had something it. like that right i had the damn thing going anyways welcome to the wagon wire guys you guys know the drill man we're up and at it and crazy this morning already on this fun sunday man bringing you your masters coverage bringing you some previews of nba playoffs and a little bit of a preview of some nhl playoffs man we got to get ready for lord stanley as well we got some in or uh some nfl news all of a sudden all this money that shohei otani lost <laughs> lost just get swept under the rug and this guy's we're blaming it on his best friend and interpreter that he's that bad of a gambler and baseball just gets to get away with it right uh, of course shit bullshit <laughs> we'll be breaking that down too man but only in outs um unfortunately it, we got some things going on we got some logistics that we need to figure out this morning uh on on the personal side of the house for the wagon wire and it's also demo day down there at uh the Baldwin acres location down there for um off South Lamar for pick sports gear. So we're going down there. To oh, the days. Yeah. I'm going to go get myself sweet. another paddle. Uh, well, Katie's got to get a paddle, but I got to get, <laughs> gear so I got to look good when I'm on the court, man, look good, feel good. And then you play good. You know how it, uh, how it works out. Dion used to say that shit all the time. Oh, I'm a firm believer in it. You know it. I have probably spent more time yeah. getting dressed for this show. <laughs> Do you play pickleball at all? No, nah, man, I still play soccer, but I like you where get, Austin you get league soccer, right? Like you, you play with Lee and all them. And oh, uh, I you? used to, I need to get back into it. I was playing like indoor. It was like a, oh, like a right. hockey game, but you're playing soccer. Like I got no, checked into the boards quite often. Dude, are you kidding me? I'm from ba the Baltimore blast. Oh yes. The Baltimore blast. I, I loved indoor soccer as a kid. So, 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 um, I saw Texas sports and filter tweet out that Texas is playing lacrosse. Texas was playing Texas A&M and lacrosse. Yeah, I mean, the club teams it, are a big like, deal. Okay, club teams. I was going to say, like, did did we add another female sport for Texas to allow us to uh, put that? Because I think that's the I-9 rules. Like, you got to have a um, certain amount of sports for I'm not sure have, how uh, Title IX refers to, like, recreational sport in club. I'm no, assuming it has if, to. If, if it wants to be something outside of club, if it wants to be on the scale – Oh, a varsity for, sport. Yes. Right, for varsity sport. Yeah, you would have to include like the same amount of scholarships. And, and that's why like a lot of programs will have football and then you'll have more women programs like of tennis or bowling or something like that because you have to even out the scholarships that are right. allowed. And it's just like football takes up so many, you know? Yeah. But it would be cool to see. I mean, the way that these colleges are going, remember how soccer was talking about the Super League? And yeah, like there was supposed yeah. to be, yeah, I kind of think that college football beat world soccer to the super league because that's essentially what the that's SEC what, will be what they formed with the pods or, or what it's going to be forming with the pods or whatnot. Right. Like exactly. And I'm not taking anything away from like the big 10 or whatever, but once the super pod forms for the SEC, like nobody's touching it. After yeah. that, or that's where all the money's but, flowing. Now, well, you're you no know, Michigan and Ohio State. They pull some funds. They pull some. Penn State pulls some funds. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. The, all, the, all the money is flowing through the SEC. But God. you already saw that ESPN holds so much weight in all of this because they have the rights to the SEC and the ACC. And it was like Florida State and Clemson want to leave for the ACC, but they can and they can't. It really is ESPN's could, decision to allow be, that if they want to. If Clemson left, it would. It, I feel like it would be the start of of the ACC collapsing, right? I mean, and ironically, one of the last teams to actually come into the actually no, I can't say that with the with the merge of the big or um with the merge of the Big East. I think. hey Wags, they're no. saying online that they can't hear us or they can't hear you or am I no muted? Way. Uh, yeah. Unless they're like on the app and they have an issue or something, I'm not sure. Uh, hey, Doke, shout out to you from Ketchum, oh, yeah, you're, Idaho. You're probably you're. Wait, hold on, I can't hear you. Fix that G damn thing. Um, yeah. Wait a second. So maybe we got some things firing off some trouble on the app here. I'll check with technical difficult with our technician. Um, 
Oh, he Dope Gears oh, is fine. Are you fine. Well, thank, thank, thank you. And you guys are hearing us on the app, or are you guys hearing us? Doke, where are you listening to us at? Are you listening to us here um, on stream, or are you guys listening on the app? I'm I'm assuming that uh, JW Crunch is on the app. Yeah, Magic Man, thanks yeah, for chiming yeah, in. Thanks so much for the clarification. They say in the tubes, so the ones that yeah, aren't tied. The what? The, the, tubes, the tubes. What the hell are you talking about, Smash? YouTube. They're watching on YouTube. Juan, oh, gotcha. what's you up, yo? Okay. As well, so it's got to be the app. All right. It's got to be a problem with the app. Yeah. That's, so. Uh, so usually when I fire off the app from my house, it doesn't pick up my voice. Oh, okay. Which is, or, or like it doesn't pick up my audio going out. It picks up my co-host and whoever's on the show with me, but it doesn't fire off. I, I, I don't know why it doesn't give to or it doesn't pick up my audio outlet, my audio hey, outlet coming from this mic, but it picks up your microphone. You're, you're like my weird. technical guru. So I'm just Dude, like, if, if you I, don't know, like, I'm not going to know. It, if I don't understand it, be, like BK and I have gone at it like four or five times trying to fix this thing. And we just we can't we can't figure it out, man. It's so weird. It's not my specialty, man. If I wish if I could, if I would, I could help. I would. Uh, same. No, <laughs> I'm know? saying, man, if I can't fix it, I don't, I'm, in, you know. I don't feel like a lot of people can, and not to say that I'm like really, you know, tech savvy and shit like that. But hell, man, I've I've played a lot of Fallout games. But oh, dude, have you seen Fallout? Did yes. You this out? Yes. Yes. I kind of. I like it. I like I've, it. Dude, I've, I like I've, it. Through, I finished all eight episodes. You already finished it all. Two day, two days. Jeez. Didn't stand a chance. Didn't stand a chance. I got through the first one. Smash, I finished it, man. One I was really best, digging one it. One of the best shows I've seen, Smash. What, <laughs> really? The, the best, Damn. The best game adaptation, at least. Okay. The okay. Game adaptations aren't really that good. When really I not, like, you don't play it out on the screen that well. Oh, it's like Halo. Halo sucks. <laughs> Halo. I, I couldn't couldn't even finish. Are it. any of y'all out there watching Halo? Do you have a different opinion than Wags? Because I don't, I, I don't disagree with you, man. It, it really isn't that good. It's not. It's pretty good bad. Either. It's it's not it's even crazy. the story. It's not even the lore that you got in in the video game. The only <laughs> the only gripe that I'll say with Fallout, and because I don't want to spoil it, because it's it's so damn good. Those okay. of you guys that have seen Justified with Walter Gogans and Justified, you know exactly what you're yeah. going to get in the character of the ghoul, right? Ooh. Walter Gogans sells out in every role that he does. He is by far probably one of my favorite actors of all time right and i don't think he gets the credit and love that he gets because he's not on like mainstream he's not in like mainstream hollywood right he's yeah he's usually doing shows on like fx and stuff like that but he like he's been in um the shield uh justified like i've already mentioned um uh, what else um he was in oh major league uh major league back <laughs> to the minors with that's Patrick. right he back to downtown. the minors he was yes. uh, Shane downtown. I, I can't remember his last their, the last name, but he was the only one that he got. Get, he gets called up to the Twins, and he you know they start pitching him inside, and he can't. Or wait, they start pitching him outside, and he can't hit opposite field. That that was the yeah because he pulled everything right. Yeah, sh- I'm going downtown. I'm Shane downtown. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, Walter Gogans is the dude's <laughs> name, and he's he's fantastic. Um, Kyle Ma- um Kyle McLaughlin, uh, the the eighties. The, the guy that was a, a huge star in the 80s, um, in a lot of David Lynch's films, he was in Twin Peaks. He was in the original there Dune. He was in uh, um, Sex in the City. Uh, he was one yeah, of Charlotte's right. husbands in Sex in the City. He was Trey. I completely Trey. forgot about that. That's right. <laughs> Dude, I got, a, I got a whole book up here or a, a whole catalog of, of movies I've seen. That's what happens when you're in the military and, you get, and um, you're not in a kinetic set like – Mil- the war war isn't just fighting every day usually it's like fighting for a couple of days and then mm-hmm. it's quiet for a month you know what i mean it's just like, all right well where, where's the kinetic action at right so in that downtime you're either reading books or they made this great invention called a portable dvd player back in the the early 2000s oh so yeah i remember a those. lot of dvds in our downtime man so caught up on caught up on uh sex in the city and stuff like that i mean we really we ran out of a lot of shit to watch so we were looking for <laughs> to watch. um but anyways uh this dude he's fantastic if you guys are into post-apocalyptic series i would definitely recommend highly recommend checking out amazon prime's fallout it is fantastic uh those of you guys that didn't hear uh we are ending the show a little bit early this morning um gonna do one hour because we gotta we got some logistics that we gotta take care of we gotta run my wife uh, up to get a little bit of uh to help her sister-in-law with the dog they're out yeah of i was asking about that the, oh so you guys are like dog sitting essentially y- yeah yeah but um 
usually she stays the night over there, but ah, uh, okay, it didn't happen. Um, last night, so I gotta take her over there, and then Reed's gonna have the car, so he's gotta get to work. So totally, we got, we got some shuffling around to do, man. Yeah, we yeah, only got, got some of that cars, softball which today. Reminds me, I gotta get out to Covert Bee Cave and see my friends out there and talk to them about a car getting Reed set up about a truck. Well, my guy wants a truck. No, here's the predicament. Like what type of truck? <laughs> yeah, he ain't getting a he ain't getting a, a brand new king size. Uh, Ford pick him up. He ain't getting uh, that. Pick him up. Or, or Chevy pick him up. Pick him up. Oh, I it. know he wants that pickup to pick him up. I get it. You know, he wants that four by four. He wants to put him around in the back of the bed and shit without seatbelts. I ain't got time for that. No, nah, nah, man. The dude already got in, in three <laughs> three wrecks in, in four days, my guy. I know. You know man. What I, mean? I felt so, so bad for the kid. I was like, I know what it feels hey, like. Hey, look. Dang. Hey, he, it was his first week. That's what we're that's what we're gonna attest it to. We're it sticking with that. Week. Things are things are a little bit fast in your first week, right? You're not paying attention. You're just trying. Dude, I can only imagine how difficult it is as like a teenager now. Probably trying to look cool instead of like looking safe. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I'm just like, think about it, man. We didn't have a cell phone to contend with. That's what I was gonna say. We didn't have fucking cell phones, man. Yeah, it is the number one accident causer of all of of all time. I'm gonna go with all time now. It's not booze. It's it's cell phones. It's not. I mean, I got. I know, I know a buddy of mine that it's like, oh, he he likes to say I drive a little too fast, and I'm like, but you drive slow, but you're also on your cell phone at the same time. So who technically is the more dangerous driver here? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. See, I'm a fast. I'm. Uh, yeah, I know, man. Nobody like drive. I, I mean, this is Austin. Nobody I'm drives the speed limit. Driver. I think I'm an aggressive driver. I know. Oh, I'm you have to be. Driver. You have I'm, to I'm be. Absolutely. If you are in Austin, you have to be an aggressive driver. Yeah, man. I take I-35. Oh, I've never been here before. And then <laughs> they, oh, let me, you know. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna bypass all this traffic that's trying to get off on this exit real quick. <laughs> oh, but I've never I don't even live here. Oh my god, I got oh I've been in Austin. I got I got tags. I got a, a bumper sticker that says grew here, grew here in Austin. But all of a sudden, you know, I'm gonna have to get over because I don't know where I'm going. Oh, yeah, shit, man. Oh my gosh, dude! I saw so many would be accidents on the highway this past week. Just yesterday, going to work. So I'm just like, yeah, man. I'm I'm not looking forward to. That's the only thing I hate about work is the commute. You're lucky you get to work from how, home. How, yeah, I was going to say, how often <laughs> do you have, like, you got to get out and go every day, right? Almost. I work at least about five to six days a week, depending on how many games I have to cover. But it's just like, man, it I'm depends on the time, there. too. I'm just not there for the chase. Any, like, I don't I, I don't care about that chase anymore. You know what I mean? Like, ah, I got no choice. I am, I am content, my guy. I am. Here. Oh, dude. I mean, I am, if I, if I had that setup I mean? you got, I would be too. <laughs> so I just like, I used to love, like, I used to love getting out and, and we're like going from, from spot to spot and location to lo- location, right? I used to love it. But, um, you know, now I, I just, I, I really enjoy just the continuity and, and the stability of being able to have everything at my, uh, I guess it's not even that. It's convenience, right? I just, I got soft. That's true. Man. I just like sitting in my own house, man. Um, yeah. and, and dude, like, it's realistic it, though. It's like I, I I say that driving is therapeutic and it's peaceful, and it is, but not in the city, right? Like, so when I'm driving in the city, I get real angst and I get, you know, my my blood starts to boil a little bit. You know, anxiety mm. starts to, to to bubble up a little bit just because I don't one. People aren't even paying attention to where they're going. We just talked about it, you know. Yeah, that's like eighty-eight percent. Yeah, dude, and <laughs> and one like I don't want to be pissed off for the rest of my day. And <sighs> usually, traffic pisses me off. Austin traffic definitely pisses me off, right? So, are you when are you're you trying to make right hand turns from the left hand lane? I got a problem with you, my guy, and I'm probably gonna follow you. All right, I'm probably gonna say, hey, we need to have a conversation. Oh man, I saw somebody I do that, that to no, somebody I else the that, other day. I am that I am that aggressive to where I'm that dude. Uh, I mean, some people, yeah. I mean, there were some really, really, really bad drivers, man. I can't help. I can't help. I'm already like upset about it because I'm like, I have to get on the highway here in a bit. <laughs> speaking speaking about aggression, and and you're you're a fight guy, right? Yeah. We had WrestleMania go down. Cody Rhodes seals the deal with his story. Uh, we didn't get to talk about that because I got sick. Uh, Dude, last but what a what spectacle time. that was! Crazy. Man, it's I like mean, it's like it's man, almost man. cool again. <laughs> Dude, almost. Cody Rhodes is almost cool again. No, no, like pro wrestling. Oh, like, um, like, it's like, it's almost trending that way again, because like, oh, like the height. When, when did it stop being cool? Uh, from 2002. After like, after the Attitude Area? Yeah. From there, there was like a slight renaissance. Area. <laughs> I think after so. the Attitude Era? Era. 
Yeah. Era? Uh, it's not, it's not New era? Era? Yeah. Um, uh, real quick, a update on your Masters. We got Scheffler at uh, the top of the leaders boards there, right above Morikawa. Um, Scheffler sitting at negative seven or um, seven under on the day. And then Morikawa six under. Homa right behind him for the close up the top three uh, with five under. Um, and both of these guys uh, teeing off, or all three of these guys teeing off at 135. Dang. Um, and that is central time. So if you're on the East Coast, that's two o'clock for your time. Or kind of have a feeling there's going to be a playoff in this one. Uh, it feels, it feels. It does feel that way. I don't know why everybody is just so on Scheffler to, to run away with this thing, though. Like, every, I mean, he was the hottest guy coming in here, too. Or kind of, you know, the Sharps kind of started going to him towards the, the last two, what, on Tuesday and Wednesday, mm -hmm. uh, the sharp money started coming in on Scheffler. That's where I was going to say you start seeing the shift, and I was like, um, I, I guess they knew something that we don't, right? <laughs> so maybe maybe yeah, they mean, saw that he was having a great time that week. I don't even get out much. I'm sitting here in my chair, so. Anyway, well, I was like, maybe you're like Oracle, like, you know, now on a uh, Texas sports unfiltered. This is a wonderful edition of the Wagner Wire. So if you're just now getting here, man, welcome. Welcome. Good to have you. And if you are mobile on that code of text line, 512-222-9328. Welcome there as well. Damn it. Welcome there as well. Oh, I was going to say you're kind of like Oracle, though, right at home. Like You just have like all the screens. And monitors I do. Yeah. And yeah so like... I, got a, I got a few things going on here, man. So it, we got we're keeping up on. I Usually I got stuff back there on the screens that that audiovisual consultations provided but youtube is very strict with oh, yeah streaming and with copyrights and stuff like on twitch you can get away with it you can get away with having um, stuff uh yeah stuff on your screens or whatnot because as long as they don't hear the audio it usually doesn't get picked up on their tracking so you can get away with it and you're not you know people really can't sit there from where they're viewing this show and look at that screen or look at the screen behind me and you know make out a perfect picture you know you can exactly. tell that the hockey games on you just don't know who te which teams are playing you know yeah I mean? as long as it's not the focus you see uh boston and pittsburgh last night no boston what it happened? looked like boston was running away i mean boston ended up getting the victory but boston was up at like 4-1 at one point and i'm sitting here texting tom i'm like jesus i this is why i hate the bruins pittsburgh <laughs> comes roaring back man i thought the pens were actually going to make this thing happen dude malkin malkin poking on the uh, poking at some fun, trying to get into a fight. I mean, honestly, I thought that was kind of bullshit on – it was typical Boston, basically, you know, <laughs> trying to start a fight with, with Pittsburgh. But because it's Pittsburgh, I don't like either club. Uh, I didn't well, have yeah. really a, 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 you know, skin in the game. But, like, Malkin didn't have a stick. He's trying to make a play, right? And all of a sudden, here comes Boston. I, and honestly, I didn't really see what kind of provoked this. All I know <laughs> is I look down and all, I look back up and there's Marshan at the – of course, it's Marchand at the face of, of Malkin trying to instigate and stuff. And then there are three or four Bruins, you know, throwing Malkin into the damn uh, oh, into uh, into the, the, the wall. benches. Yeah, no, into the wall, into the glass or whatnot, you know. And and next thing you know, you know, Boston's up six, you know, basically ends the comeback and Boston's up six to, six to four and ends up taking it. Uh, but yeah. Um, Philly, Philly was able to get one yesterday too. Caps were able to keep up, um, but it's it's over for the. I was going to say that. I mean, that works out for. Well, I thought that would have worked out for your Caps because I was no, like, well, I mean, the Pens, Philly, Philly, Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean New York, the the Islanders, Islanders, Pittsburgh, Philly, the Caps. They're all fighting for for this last spot here. And yeah, because I, I was like before last night, then the Pens were kind of like on a little Sid the Kid Renaissance all of a sudden. I yeah, was just were, like, man. Starting, and that's what, you know, and Tom kind of called that too. Like, McKay, you guys want to find out, like, everybody looks for the crystal ball. Like, they they come to this show and they think, oh, you know, Wags, hey, man, you got any tips? You got any pointers? Um, and a lot of people have been asking about hockey too, dude. Uh, go to go to McKay. I'm telling you right now, like, if you're not calling up, you know, Tom McKay for audio consultation, for audiovisual <laughs> automation consultations, call him up for hockey consultations. Yeah. I'm serious. This dude is, oh, by, by the way. It's I know you're not birthday, kidding. That's why. Tom. It's his birthday, by the way. Today. Oh, happy birthday, Tom. Oh, hey, can is we, that, get a, we get a round of Is that the whole hey, reason? Chat, everybody in chat, because Tom's going to read this. Every If you're in if you're in the show, damn it, I got, I'm looking at 78 viewers in this show. Everybody say happy birthday, Tom. Do it right now, I man. Get off, get off. You get your keyboard, get your fingers activated. You got to burn some calories, anyways, while you're watching this show. Say happy birthday, Tom. He'd appreciate that. I'd appreciate that. Damn it, he's one of the best sponsors here for Texas Sports Unfiltered. You guys Hell wonder yeah. how you guys wonder how you can keep us uh, 
uh, you know, the lights on and up and going all the time, thank our sponsors. I mean, go out there and, and, and do stuff for our sponsors. They're the ones that think us go, you know, 24 hours a day. They are the absolute best, man. And audiovisual consultations is, is top of the tier and top of the pantheon for them. They're all great. But, I mean, Tom, Tom's been with me. Hell for for uh, it goes way years. back like a long time like he was my first sponsor he's my best sponsor and it, it just it, we created a great relationship happy birthday Tom Appreciate yeah, you, buddy. and he's a great guy dude man yeah, yeah great, I was like he great, makes great, me great laugh so much <laughs> great dude man great dad great great husband great friend he's just he's a good guy good good dude to have in here he's like Mickey he's like the Mike yeah man. you know what I mean it's great like you know if I had a if I had an RPG party, you know, and I had to build a crew, he'd definitely be added to it. If you had a what? <laughs> an RPG. You know how you have to make a team, like in Final Fantasy? Oh, oh, okay, okay. I, yeah, I thought yeah. you said RBG at first. Oh, oh, oh real? I it was oh, no. RGV. It is RGV. That, that was like, I, mean, I had to do a double take there for a second. I was like, what? <laughs> like, Smash, how late were you out last night, my guy? Oh, oh you know yeah. what I did last night? I called the doubleheader. You UFC 300? No, but I saw the highlights. Damn, that was a nasty, nasty ass knockout. That oh, was crazy. Oh, you see my Coke fest? You see? I do. The fact, the fact that he could have—it's it, fifth round. It's fifth round. He could have played. He could have played coy. He yeah. He, he had him on points. He he he's, he already had won the fight. We're talking about Max Holloway uh, versus um uh Gaethje. Um, he he had Max Holloway had Gaethje done like. G- Gaethje, yeah, he's gonna win this on points. He's got to get. He's got to get the knockout. Gaethje does right. Mm-hmm. Holloway could have just played, you know, run, run around and play coy all of them, all, you know, for the rest of the damn ten seconds or, or fifteen seconds, however long they had. Nah, bro. Holloway not only does he stand in the center of the ring, he fucking points. Pointed. Let's go. Look right here. I heard goosebumps. I got goosebumps telling this. He right here, and then they go. I mean, and not. Not that they were, not that their exchange was was weak and lackluster beforehand, right? I mean, they were going at it the entire fifth round, or, or I would say like after the fourth minute, in the final minute of of the fifth, like you could tell, like I mean, exhaustion was setting in, but still, they were still throwing, they were still throwing exchanges back and forth, right? Then all of a sudden, you know, it just it felt like you know once once the fight was in, once the fight was kind of in Holloway's uh, corner, so to speak, you know. Everybody, everybody figured Holloway to just turn it off and kind of shut it down, right? Nah, man. The guy actually points to the center of the octagon and calls him out. Still can't believe that. And he's just like, "Let's get it, you know, let's go." And within three seconds, and this had this had to factor in too because he got a personal bonus, like he got a uh, a, yeah, you get the knockout bonus. Yeah, you get the knockout bonus, right? Let's go right here, and the like with three seconds left, hits him with a a right cross and just connect and just out. Yeah, leaps, just goes to sleep, man. I, I don't know where that ranks in my knockouts, but the fact just in the just the just the pageantry of it alone in the exci- hell you can hear the like I'm excited telling you retelling the story right dude because like, the crowd usually, reaction was hype. Usually I don't watch too much UFC. I don't watch it live. You know, yeah, I, mean, I definitely don't watch it live. But I you know we got this thing that we've been paying. We we paid for like one program and somehow we got accredited because I didn't I ended up didn't pay for it and I wanted to see how <laughs> fight last night so I was able to watch the fight. Uh, I'm not really big on pay per view events, but you know sometimes sometimes I'll pay for it as long as it's not a damn uh, what Justin Justin or what is what's his name Paul not Logan oh Paul. Jake Paul Jake Paul yeah as long as it's not a Jake Paul fight, you're not gonna I'm watch not Tyson pay. Paul nah I'm not I'm not giving that money. Dude, I you know why? Because in two days, two days before that, they're gonna say, "Oh, it's an exhibition." Yeah, 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 definitely. But I kinda, be, I'm kind it'll of be all on. It'll be all on Jake Paul's uh, terms or whatnot, and then Tyson, you know, Tyson will have to give leeway. It's or, or we'll go down though. It'll it's go kind down of like ball. it's kind of like a real life Rocky Six. Get smashed! Don't Rocky don't Balboa? Man. No, because it's rigged. It's rigged. Balboa didn't rig the fight. Well, I mean, the guy broke his hand. I mean, in the middle of the fight. I mean, that's a that's a little Hollywood ish. But this is as close as we're going to get. Get out of here, Smash! You don't want to see the former champ. No, You're still the, one of the baddest if, men on the planet. Look, man. Look, if if Jake Paul does not get knocked out by Mike Tyson, it's fixed. That's my that's that's my Dang. conclusion already. I mean, they that had already cool. said that they had to wear headgear. I think they're losing the headgear, but they're going to wear. 16 ounce gloves so a pound 
And I'm like, instead of your regular eight ounce gloves, you're telling me the impact pressure of Tyson's punch isn't going to break your ribs. Mm. The guy, I don't care. He's 57 years. What? How old is he? Um, I'm 54. He's got to be close to his his late 50s to 60s. He's close to 60. I'll say that because I mean, he's in good shape. Um, and he's gonna have some yeah, power yeah, left. Magic Man, Magic Man, it's on Netflix. Of course, it's on. Netflix. Yeah, it's on Netflix. It's it's <laughs> yeah, it's on Netflix. Hey, I was gonna say that Logan Paul kid in WWE though. I will give him credit, man. He's really, really good for being only like twelve matches into his career. So, and that's he's perfect you know, that's for my, like that. But see, from problem. what you just that's described though earlier, Paul. you just said it. Twelve, twelve. He's Intercontinental Champion. He's twelve matches in. And yeah, like, but he's good. He gets the reactions. Did you see how many views? The number of views he got is that is because that of his why, match. Is that why is that why he's, is yes. that why he's an intercontinental champ? Is that what is that the prereq to be an intercontinental champ? Is just how much fans you draw in? No, but but well, yeah, because there is a certain amount. That's what pro wrestling has been built around. It's like you're the champion because you're usually the most popular guy. I mean, Hulk Hogan was the most popular wrestler yeah, in sure. the world. For sure. You know, and you, thanks, you, dope. thank you, dope. 57. 57 years old, thanks, right? dope. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, man, that's like the thing. It's like, yeah, it's all about making money. And that's what it kind of goes back to what you were describing with Max Holloway. Like, all that stuff you saw was like pro wrestling style. And he happens to be like one of the more charismatic in ring performers for I UFC. Had- I don't but, know what that was. What I saw last night. That's. That, I mean, that's that's that, where it's I taken mean, from. Like Muhammad yeah, Ali, from like the Prince Nassim Ahmed's to anything that you see in professional wrestling is that Muhammad extra. I never, I never saw Muhammad Ali point to somebody. They go. They go toe to toe, and Ali knocks somebody out. Oh yeah, I saw the round finish, but I never saw. I never saw the fight. I mean, he would, he called people over. You yeah, know, ask sure. him to come hit him, and then he, he would, would like do his thing. He would do yeah. open, but I never remembered. I, I haven't. I don't think I've seen anywhere where a where there was a knockout right him. after. Get yeah, right and call and call the dude out and say, "Hey, toe to toe right here," and then called his shot and knocked the guy out within ten seconds. I don't. Yeah. think I've ever seen. He that. wasn't. But the thing is, that's like a no risk thing to do at that situation for him, you know? Because it's like if he doesn't knock him out, it was still cool that he called him out, right? Right. But but I mean, no. If I he gets he knocked risk, out, if he gets knocked out, he's done. He doesn't. He he. he yeah, loses. but he but he. He knew he wasn't getting knocked out, and he knew he was going to win on points regardless. Smash, smash! You know damn well it only takes one. It, it only takes one shot, man. But he's gone through the rest of the fight taking his best shots as it was, so he he must have known and must have felt confident that the power wasn't going to be there, especially late in the game. No, you're right. I mean, you you get that you get that feel if you're. I mean, I've never been in a professional fight, but you kind of you kind of get that fight or flight sense when you're in a fight. You know what I mean? Well, you like if you go. Vibe. Okay, I, I've been in, I've been in the ring in a couple of fights. So like it's like one of these things, like in a boxing, and it's like okay, so three minutes feels like an eternity. They obviously go longer than to the dude's legs. Though? Like, are you seeing if he's if he's got anything? Or, oh yeah, yeah, because yeah, you're you, you look. You I'm you looking shoulder the exchange if he's got anything left in his in his punch. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, because you can see their face. They're looking right at you, and you're just all, like you're looking at that person like eye to eye, and then you're kind of like watching I, the I feet. I don't look eye to eye. I'm looking at the hands. That's where I'm. I'm usually. Well, looking you at don't want to follow their hands because a lot of fighters, some of these guys will be doing this, and like you're watching, you're watching, you're watching, and then boom, it comes out of nowhere, and you're not paying attention. A lot of it's going to be like their feet, and then like their their shoulders i'm kind of just following because right. a lot of people I'm, like to bob their head I'm, and stuff too no, no I'm but it was just you, like you don't want to keep it you don't want to keep a target you but, don't want to keep your target but it's one of those things it's like okay like you guys listen have been in this close quarter over here. listen to teddy atlas <laughs> over here giving dude giving I, I don't watch a lot of usc but i love the fight game because i got to call a lot of boxing and, and and i used i had a really good trainer i, I really rogan's call i wish i would have captured rogan's call that was he's good at it man i mean you can sure, love like, him or hate him, but he was good. He's good at right. what he I does. I mean, yeah, exactly. I, I know he's a polarizing figure in the sport, or not just in sports, but in yeah, in, in pop culture, in media, in general, pop culture, whatnot. But his fucking call last night was fantastic, dude. Because and I know he gets theatrical. I know he goes because the cameras on him or whatnot. But I mean, he's a performer. I don't think he. I don't think he was even paying attention to the damn camera last night. He was just that and all with Holloway's antics. Oh well, because he's a uh, you know just like how I was like oh I love the fight game. It's like oh he loves UFC. He's a practitioner. He's done it. You know, so it's like of course he's only into it. And that's what you want as like a fan of anything that you want. You want somebody as passionate as you are. Like swimming fans want somebody as passionate as other swimming fans. You know, it's a very small sector of them, but are you they a try to swimming fan. 
uh i got to do a couple of swimming events so i kind of am now man it's pretty intense when you're there like in person it's just like you don't and get to appreciate one. here comes the backstretch oh and the breast stroke is getting stronger that's exactly how it was it was like oh the swim from texas and lane three is in, Did you, you know with a time of 1.38 Really good kick on that turn. She was able to stay under the water, gets out to about midway through the lane, and then boom, right on the tail, picking up right off. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. No, I'm you're right. Know. Actually, it's Never about all about it's all about that dolphin kick and trying to get as far under the water because you can kind of skim crazy. through as opposed to actually having to break the water. So it's yeah, all about physics. What you got? Um, we do got the uh, NBA playoffs coming up. Coming up that's you want to get into nba real quick i have been trying to keep my mouth shut about it but i'm here on my official duty as like the mvp <laughs> uh trying to get luke at the mvp this year because he deserves the mvp so i'm just doing my media part here today just saying to everybody that's watching out there luka Doncic should be the nba mvp this season period all right i'm with you there i, I get it he don't play do defense I understand, but I got to take DJ's comment right here. I'm late okay. to the fallout show talk. I'm 40 minutes into episode one. Shit is good or shit. It's good. Wags. Can you tell Bethesda to hurry up and put out episode or fallout, out fallout five? five. <laughs> okay. DJ, I can't spoil anything for you. All right. So I went through eight episodes, eight episodes in two days, my guy, eight episodes. Tell me what you think about Gogan's character and Gogan, uh, Gogan's um, portrayal of the ghoul, right? I think he's got to win. A, a, you know, I don't know what they give to show. I'm pretty sure shows still get Academy Awards, right? Yeah, yeah. They, I I don't know. If there's like or an they amount. Get, of, they get like an Oscar. They get Oscars, don't they? Well, it's not like, Oscars, but TV they, but they definitely like, Emmys. Okay, they get an Emmy. TV right? Emmy. But if it's you can get a Golden Globe. So, but if it's a movie, you get an Oscar. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of other ones too, but that would be the that's like the pinnacle is the Oscar. So, all right, what is what is the biggest one for like a TV show? What would be? Thought, oh no! Wait, no! You would get an you would get a Golden Globe for uh, a movies also, or shows, on, or is it or like Netflix? Right? I thought uh, you know you that's a great a, question. Now, can you get an Oscar for Netflix shows? Can you? I mean, not the shows, but maybe a movie. That, if they put out a movie, when Ricky Gervais was given that one speech, remember that you know the one speech where he like he drugged <laughs> all of Hollywood, yeah, and yeah, all the reps or whatnot, like. Apple was there. Netflix basically won every award. What was that? Was that the Golden Globes or was that the Oscars? No, nah, that would have been the Golden Globes then. Because okay. the Oscars are just like movie movies. Oscars movies only, Magic Man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. you know, yeah, Magic Emmy Man's for TV. Gonna our, Magic Man's going to be our, our uh, <laughs> residential producer here. He's going to be our Schwab? He, he's the guy that, that's looking up everything for us. We appreciate – actually, we appreciate all the, the fans of the show that actually provide you know, excellent content and excellent – um, you know, that's game. that's what Texas Sports and Filters needs, man. It needs its own game show. Because I was what thinking, like, oh, he's like our Schwab. So it was like Stump the Schwab. And I was like, man, what, I remember watching that. You've been calling game shows, too. Like, you've been doing the game show a bit. What would, what would, like, our theme be? Well, we can still do, like, a version of Family Feud. I just make it all sports questions. I'll go out and pull the people of Austin. It's we like, don't hey. have a scummy <laughs> host to fill up on everybody's wives, though. I guess somebody has well, to do I it. I mean, man. Richard, Daw <laughs> Richard Dawson. Richard Dawson is probably the game, the, the, the rummiest. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it. Did like, you say rummiest? The crummiest. Oh, I thought you said rummiest. And I was like, that would be probably accurate. He, he does drink a lot of rum. It looks like he drinks a lot of booze. That's for sure. The crummiest game show host of all time, man. It wasn't uh, about game show hosting. It was about suaveness. It was. It was about topping <laughs> a field. That's what it was. It was about. It was about making sure you're you're making plans for tomorrow <laughs> and tonight. You're looking at dinner and breakfast. Oh like, my man. god, man, he I was bad, but he's the, but he was really good in what's it called? Um, running, running man. man. Yes. Running man. And you know you got it. He was so good in it. I was like, man. I, I I love that movie. Totally underrated. So it was Jesse the Body Man. That, that is an underrated Schwarzenegger movie. That I think a, so. I don't think it gets enough love. love. It doesn't. Well, I mean, who? Uh, kind of. It's a it's a weird premise. You just, understandable. You just said it, uh, Jesse the Body. The Body was in that, right? Yeah. He was he was like the the former champion or whatever that went to go. He, be he's like the he's like the main the, bounty hunter guy. Yeah. The main dude that comes out and gives you the champion that was retired or whatnot, and then they call him back, and then they make a an AI. Um, like, like real to where it's a fake, it's a fake like hologram or whatnot of yeah. Uh, there, and then Arnold comes back and gets him, gets him in real life. Man, that's a really good '80s flick, dude. Dude, that one is, of my favorites. 
Arnold. They need it. They need, they need to put that in HD. Okay, that's top, I would say that's top five for me. Running Man? Running Man's top five. Arnold top Wolf five? Man. Damn, man. Top fives are so hard. Commando? I got Commando and Running Man. Oh, and just like in 80s movies? And no, like, for Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, Arnold movies. Like, yeah. uh, like, kindergarten I mean, I, Cop? I can't sit there and put... Can you, you got Kindergarten Cop top five? Hell yeah, dude. It shows his range. Kindergarten Cop, True <laughs> Lies, Terminator 2. Uh, D2, I'll give you... <laughs> Kindergarten cop, yeah, man, it shows his range. Come yeah, on, bro. Somebody write that. Somebody <laughs> clip that shit. Quote it. Smash Simmons. Arnold hey, Simmons. it's better than his performance Arnold in um. Kindergarten what was cop it? Is Batman Forever. Best movie. It shows his range. Fucking clip that shit. Oh, Wait, you didn't like Turbo Man? What? You didn't like Turbo Man? The one with all Turbo Man. It has Dan Hartman. Or right, wait. Phil Hartman, I'm sorry. Dan, Dan, Dan Hartman's the guy that sings. That's not Turbo, man. That's Jingle All the Way. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. That's okay, so you did Turbo, see it. Man. So you did see it. Good. Good deal. Glad to hear that. <laughs> I know. I did. But at least you knew what I was talking about. Yeah, he's Turbo. <laughs> with, with, uh, with Jake. Um, it's Sinbad. Sinbad's in it, but who's the dude? Jake, uh, the, the little kid, man. The dude that's that ends up being Darth Vader. Oh. Oh, uh, Jake Lloyd, Jake Lloyd. Yeah, I didn't even know that was. I didn't think that was him. Dude, Jeez, I can, pull, I, I can pull all these na- stupid names out of my head, but I can't but yeah, remember dude, like, last night's sports. Kindergarten Cop, Terminator Two, True Lies, Running Man, and True Predator. Lies. True Lies. I will. That's that's top. That's dude. That's yeah. Top. That that movie. I remember. Wow. I was watching it with my parents. I had to be like ten or something, and like they tried to cover my eyes during like the Jamie Lee Curtis oh, like my. strip oh, scene. My God, that's education. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was like, hey, that was necessary viewing. It's appointment. <laughs> viewing. Yeah, it, it was part of the plot. We're in that as well. The Sand Spider. Oh, man. It's Dude, such really, a good film. Really good movie. Really good plot, man. But you know, man. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Wagner Wire Hero. Do you kind of feel like the CGI in movies, those kind of takes away from what we used to have? Because those are like real planes in that movie. That's not computers. Oh, yeah, you know? with the flyer, with the F-18s. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, like, that's a real dude hanging off of it. <laughs> You know, that's like a stunt yeah, double. That wasn't real. Holy shit. Yeah, dude, that was all real stuff. Yeah, it wasn't like I computers. I forget, yeah, I forget about that. I mean, it, it definitely like, I, I think you, and you'll see it with a little bit in Fallout too, right? You see a little bit of the CGI effects too, right? Like it doesn't give you that natural. Like you don't uh, get immersed. Ambient aesthetic, you know what that's, I mean? That, that type of immersion, yes. So, I, I mean, yeah, like Dune, like Dune looked fantastic, but a lot of that was, was CGI, you know what I mean? So. I don't know. It's still so old. Jamie Lee was still a smoke. How old was Jamie Lee in that, Doke? Dude, that's a good question. Had to be like... Read well, Doke's I, comment here. True Lies, so old Jamie Lee was still a smoke show. I thought so. I mean, was she in her 50s? Um, I think she, she had to be in her 40s. Like, she's like maybe. Late 60s. Late 30s to 40s right. then? She looked, she looked incredible. She was in fantastic shape. Especially when she does that scene where she's dancing for Arnold. Like, yeah like jesus i don't even i i don't think that was a body double either like that was her that oh was, yeah yeah i don't i don't well it, it almost seems like in that was kind of like her forte right in every movie that she did if she doesn't if she doesn't show the twins she's showing like a distribution <laughs> of the twins you know it's kind of I mean? like tom cruise running in every film right basically. yeah it's happening yeah tom cruise running jamie lee showing the the the, the puppies you know what i mean that's just usually how it goes man Anyways, man, give you another. I don't think anybody's live right now from uh, from the Masters. From the Masters. I'm not seeing any update. Well, anyways, the top three they don't get started off until 1:35, so the show will already be over. If you guys missed it, um, we are only doing an hour today because of some logistics stuff on my end. So I got to take care of some things. Um, well, technically, it, it would have been on my end too. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Smash also he can only do an hour because he's got to go call a game. But I got to go uh, run my wife around and uh, help out with some uh, sister-in-law stuff. So we'll okay, but it's not like True Lies though. 1994 is when it came out. He says. Um, but also, um, we're doing an event down. We're going to go check out an event from one of our sponsors. As a matter of fact, um, Pick Sports Gear, guys. Pick Sports Gear. If you guys want to get into um, pickleball and you don't know if you know how to look good, you don't know how to look fly, go to PickSportsGear.com right now. P-I-X Sports Gear. Or just meet me down there at Baldwin Acres. 
off South Lamar today, man. From from 12 to 5, uh, we're going to be out there playing some pickleball with Pick Sports Gear. Uh, it's going to be a great event. So come on out there and see us, man. Going to check out uh, these ergonomic paddles that I got to get so I don't get arthritis in my – No, you, you laugh about it, Smash. But no, I know it's true. That's why. I don't know if from gripping the, the rifle and, like, seriously, like, when you're walking around as a Marine and you got to carry a rifle, you know, eight hours a day, you get like, or working with your hands, like if you got it like a damn, if you're using hammers or, or power drills or whatnot. Oh, well, yeah. You it for like 20 years, you're going to have arthritic or, or arthritic uh, hands and stuff, right? Well, like, not so only that, paddles, but these paddles are so lightweight and they're ergonomic to where it doesn't really put strain on your wrist or whatnot. So you got to go to pick sports gear, PIX sports gear.com and get these paddles that are exceptional for you. You'll be at the top of the game because you'll be dominating because you'll have all the, you know, the, the physical um, advantages that you need from pick sports gear.com. So make sure you're going to pick sports gear. That's P I X sports gear and meet me down at the Baldwin Acres area off of South Lamar. Well, now I want there to be a Texas sports unfiltered like pickleball team, and and I just want to be like an alternate, gotta, so I have I an excuse. Have it, like I'm trying <laughs> just to, to go buy the like, stuff. Remember how we did like horn bash? I'm yeah. trying to put together like a TSU bash, right? Oh, okay. I'm trying to get a good like a few events there: Madden tournament, of course, pickleball mm -hmm. tournament, um, washers tournament. Oh yeah, you gotta have that. Maybe some cornhole. But I, dude, I like I like pitching shoes. I'm still a horseshoes guy. I've never done that. You've never pitched shoes? Are you no, only only washers. Like I've never. Not, is that not a, a Texas thing? You guys. I mean, I, I'm sure it is in parts of Texas, but I mean, I even went to Texas A&M for a little while, and like there wasn't somebody Hold pitching. Up. Hold up, we need to do an experiment here on on the Wagner Wire on Texas Sports Unfiltered, please, and I'll make it easy for you. Put a one in the chat if you have thrown horseshoes before. Put a two in the chat if you have not. I am. Curious. I'm a data guy. I am curious to see this. And it's like, like I'll tell you, I'll put it to you this way, man. I threw like one of those ropes on one of those lasso? metal practice. Have you? A yeah, lasso? a lasso. I've okay. thrown a lasso on one of those practice bullhead things that's made out of metal before. I've and but I've never pitched horseshoes. Man, that's how man, you've never thrown horseshoes. Are see, I'm serious? telling you, man. It's like I know that the cowboy aesthetic is kind of like goes hand well, in hand with like, Texas. I can even give you like a horseshoe reference, like three points to one point or a ringer or nothing. Well, like I that. mean, they were the Baltimore Colts, so it does make sense, right? <laughs> I'm well, sure you know, there's yeah, an abundance I, 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 of horseshoes. I figured, there. Well, I figured horseshoes was a was a national, not pastime, but a national sport that you played in the backyard or something. Hell, I know, but I mean, it could be regional because I never heard of washers until I came down here. I, I don't know why that is the case. And I never really heard of washers either where I'm from. <clears throat> no, the no, the Magic washers, Man, washers doesn't count. <laughs> washers doesn't mean like, it's, it's completely separate. So horseshoes and washers are completely different because it's a, it's a different point scale. I mean, same concept. You know yeah, I mean? You're trying to the learn. concept's the same, but I mean, just the but basic. It's, just it's physics, you know, weight of the shoe, distance of where you're throwing it from. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're trying to get the washer into that little hole, essentially. That's yeah. what we're and trying you're to trying do. You're trying to get a horseshoe around the, around the, the pole. The big old, <laughs> big old rod. Trying to, get, trying to get a ringer. Trying to get Play. a ringer. Trying to get a leaner. I mean. When was the last time back? you've played um, croquet? I'm the fucking national champion of croquet. They just threw me croquet. out of the Damn, bro. I didn't realize you, you were that good at croquet. You didn't see that? It's on my wiki. No, it was the national croquet champion. I must have missed it. I thought it was like on the Ocho or something. How did you miss it? It was all over the news. <laughs> it wasn't I, on the Ocho. It was actually a, the marquee highlighted event, the headline on the Ocho. Ah, it's because they put it with on at 3 a.m. With the little squirrel in the damn uh, Riding the boat? <laughs> yeah, man. It has. I'm right after. I'm actually a part of the highlight. I, I do one of those hits through the leg. Boom. Like I was because I was riding. I was on the damn croquet course right riding around on the damn acting like i was uh adam oh, i was gonna say before, right and all of a sudden for my final shot for the final ball shot i go right between the legs oh bully boom and i hit it in man fantastic dude, i was gonna that. say oh you're riding the horse on the course you're in the, the wrong French, sport <laughs> the French couldn't stand me because i was an american and i had too much pizzazz right but i'm sitting here i gotta be elegant and flamboyant I'm in france like i'm sitting here you know floating around the damn a sachet, a sachet or whatever and they didn't like me i was trying to be like them but they didn't like me i wasn't oh yeah yeah and they, they, don't, they don't like it when you toss it back into their face <laughs> no nah, man are you kidding i've never played croquet in my fucking life <laughs> i know that like in a backyard you, you gotta say bully right you gotta say bully and you gotta wear old spice and you gotta have a sweater and shit when you're playing croquet. i would assume that's how it's supposed to work 
apparently like the the rich people don't use the color coded sticks or what it's what it's it, it, what it, it's pull it's pull on the ground what is it mm, i guess it's like almost like a version of it's not even it's not even golf it's not even it's not even golf like you don't even get the what do you just talk about the royals you don't even get to talk about like politics or, or seal the deal you just talk about the royals that's it maybe i mean i'm assuming there's a lot of downtime standing around cucumber sandwiches or something right you know what we got to talk about though speaking of royals right we got to talk about the royals of auto dealers the royals of auto dealers is covert b games so hold tight one second while we hear from our friends at covert hi i'm dan covert with my wife hayden welcome to covert bk our newest location in the gorgeous hill country includes buick gmc cadillac chrysler dodge jeep and ram and hundreds of pre-owned and certified vehicles for you to choose from we have three service departments that are ready to take care of your car truck or suv with 86 service bays to accommodate any repair and get you in and out quickly come visit us today to select the vehicle you've been dreaming about covert born and raised in austin Yes, you are born and raised in Austin, Covert, B Cave, and all the Covert dealerships, guys. You guys heard from Hayden there. Uh, make sure that you guys get out there and lock yourself in on a great new automobile. I'm in the running myself for one. Uh, of course, that's why we're kind of ending the show an hour early. Is we got the <laughs> logistics things. And I'm not going out to Covert, B Cave to secure a, a vehicle. Um, well, we not today, some, anyways. No, not today. But, I mean, you know, we only got two cars and three people need to be somewhere. So, um, we got to prioritize and my son's got to be at work and the dogs need to be let out and fed and that the doggies come first people you guys, <laughs> you guys know me the doggies come first you guys know the drill anyways man that's kind of why we're in just a little bit early but yeah wanted to give a shout out to our friends and sponsors we already told you about our our friends at pick sports um fantastic we can't you know shout out enough for for satish and the crew of satish and tina we'll be down there to check them out uh make sure you guys uh come out and say hi to me um i'll be down there come out and challenge me in some pickleball uh, <laughs> don't me. don't do that don't do that he's very competitive <laughs> unless you think you can't win unless you're not gonna win I, I, I don't <laughs> he doesn't I'm like to lose i'm not gonna yeah don't but hold on, <laughs> hold on don't don't challenge don't let me win i'll pick up on that shit if you let oh me yeah win. he hates that even worse I'll, I'll, yeah, I will. I'll, we won't talk for the rest of the day. Like, I know. Gonna, that's why I was all like, yeah, go out and see him, but don't out. play him, man. You got to put He's out. competitive. You got to put out. I'm not, I'm not as competitive as I used to be, but I'm still like, if, it, I know you don't like to it, lose it only, though. It only, it only upsets me. It only chaps my ass for about, I don't know, an hour if I lose. Only an hour now? That's good. That's improvement, man. I get over it. I get over it. That's good. We've, a lot of growth. A lot of yes i mean that's good i was all like trust me that's good i was like i know i'm just teasing him but he but i i do know you like, okay, like to win through. what's good man welcome what's up mark? Show, mark thank you all right so um into and you guys we've given you your masters uh highlights and master masters um updates and stuff like that I remember the top three uh teeing off at 135 central time today guys so uh make sure you guys are keeping up with that and uh, to the NBA, I mean, Smash, it's the last day. Um, everybody's tipping off at the same time. It's kind of, you know, it gives you that vibe that they do over there for, um, you oh, know, that, final day that, of Prem? Soccer league across the pond there. Uh, yeah. The Which yeah. I think is the, the fitting way to end the season. Like, oh, I everybody like, plays. I, I love it. I, I think everybody tipping off at the same time, everybody playing uh, the same day or whatnot, um, especially when there's races this close. Uh, yeah i mean or, i mean the way we say that the west is solidified but still you got what one through four basically solidified you still got some plans and you know finish up the one tail of that uh of that west but i i mean west we we know that the power and the strength is in the west the winner is going to come from the west right where where are you at with the east here i like, mean boston boston should get to the finals they're 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 head and above shoulders everybody else look at what oklahoma just did the milwaukee though you know what i mean like yeah i mean milwaukee's supposed to, milwaukee's supposed to be the two like can you even give milwaukee can we can we even convincingly say that milwaukee is is the legitimate two is it not cleveland like we can't give it to cleveland we can't give it to you know another emerging no there's no other two because i mean when the when giannis is on what, what about philly when when, when well Embiid, when they have Embiid and he's healthy damn because em, and Joel and Joel Embiid healthy this season probably would have been MVP. 
because he was dominating everybody. Yeah. I guess it's just like, how healthy is he really? That's going to be yeah. the big question. So I will give him that. But right now, I still think it's like, oh, Giannis on his day. It's, 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 the Sixers ain't going to be a uh, seven or a six with Embiid. You know what I mean? They're they're a three. They're a two. Yeah, they're one well, of the I top teams. Too. Yeah, easily they could have been they could have been the top team. I mean, with Embiid, it's just like he's I that good. I don't know. Philly, uh, Boston defense is so damn good. Yeah, they're good. They know how to rotate. When they switch, they still rotate. They they're a solid unit. And, and, and I knew when they made the move for Zinger, like I knew Kristaps mm-hmm. was going to be fan, like I knew he would fit that scheme very well. Yeah, because all the pressure's know, taken off of him. I didn't know how dominant he would be. Like, and and I say he's the best third option in the league. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And and have you seen what he's able to do with the? He's still one of the best rim protectors. Yeah, I mean, he's got. I think he was just size, hurt. Dude, he, it's it's undeniable size, man. I mean, I, I think he was just like. You know how we were talking about mental growth. I think he, you know, when he was coming back from the injury, he was still trying to get back to feeling normal. Or he finally made the adjustment to his game where it's like, okay, this is how my body is now. I have to adjust for and compensate for what I can and can't do now. And I think, you know, he's finally figured it out. And he has a team that, that right. can. That's what I was going to say. He's got a lot of support figures. That too. And it he's definitely. The best third option, Smash. Exactly, and it covers up his deficiencies. And he used to be the one. Yeah, I mean, when he was the unicorn, he was spectacular. But, you know, we all lose a step over time. It doesn't matter how, you know, good your knees feel when you wake up that morning. It's just like... And, he, you know, you could argue, like, he went through one hell of an injury. It's yeah, like, I mean, it was, and for his size. Yeah, I mean, most, most players don't come back from something he's, like that. He's, he's over seven foot, isn't he? Mm-hmm. He's, he's over seven, seven feet tall. Seven yeah, one, I want to say he's about seven, seven one to seven three somewhere around there, right? But I was just and like, and the dude can, you know, he's got range, exceptional range. Um, hell, vision, vision is off the charts, and you know how you know agile he is. We just talked about how agile he is in terms of being able to, uh, to rim protect. So yeah, but like, Boston's Boston's legit, but as as legit as Boston is, like, how tough are they in the West? Are they a three mm-hmm. in the West? Like. I mean, I don't even know, man, is, because... The problem is Denver, and I, I've, I've said this for, what, about a month now, I feel like. The problem is Denver in seven. Like, se- uh, like seven games, how do you take four from, from Denver? I don't know how you defeat Jokic unless you have the bodies to do it. It's not and even, even then. They're just tough, man. They're just... You, we want to talk about size. Like, Denver's, Denver's big. Yeah. Too. They got the, yeah. I mean, because again, they can cover up for their best players' deficiencies in this case because they have the speed and the athleticism to get to the outside, shut down perimeters, and he's going to take care of anybody that comes inside. And I mean, he's got a good supporting cast too, offensively. You know, he can dish, they knock down shots. Ah, uh, I mean, they uh, should Murray, be the favorite. Murray, Murray, um, and when you do, when you rotate over the Murray, Murray can pass off to, you know, Gordon, Gordon's going to just find a way to yeah. get up and, and, you know, smash the rim. Or, or if that's shut down, then you can, you know, find a way to hit Porter Jr. or whatnot. There's, there's a lot of weapons. There's a lot of. I mean, they're just built there. really well, man. They should yeah. win this whole thing. But I, I mean, honestly, well, I, what about I, your Mavericks? Your Mavericks <laughs> got something to say about that. That's what I was gonna say. I was like, not trying to be a homer, but I don't think you want to play the Mavs right now if you're in the playoffs because they got hot at the right well, time. You got to get full health though. Like you got to have. Uh, yeah, rest in peace to his have- mom, man. His mom just passed away too, and he needs to get healthy. So, yeah, you know, I can only imagine, you know, mentally trying to get into that. But I'm like, yeah, you know, hopefully, like the basketball will kind of be the, the distraction, I guess, for him. But he needs to get healthy first, like you said, because he does, he does help. But I mean, they won the trade deadline because those trades made a huge difference to how this team functions. Like I follow all this math stuff on social media and everybody was calling for Jason Kidd's head. And I'm just like, no, he just didn't have the right players. I get it. He might not be the best in-game tactician, but he gets, he, he actually makes him play defense, <laughs> you know? And it's like, that that's not something that you see. And don't get me wrong. Luca takes off plays all the time. Yeah. But- yeah I was going to say he's the, yeah, Luca still is kind of, I won't say he's a full liability on defense anymore because he's picked it up, but it's, um, nah, he still takes off plays. Like, like if Luca, if Luca has one hell of an offensive output, like I can, like for the entire season, I can sit here and feel good about saying that he's the MVP. Dude, player. he's about to average a stat line that no other player has ever averaged before in NBA history, and like Westbrook didn't get it. He got a triple double stat line. 
Okay. But the one that he's averaging, like points plus rebounds plus assists, it's like 34, 9, and 10 or something like that. Like, I don't know if he's going to be the NBA scoring champion. He well, might. What, what was Russ's what was Russ's stat line for his triple doubles? Mm, I don't have a clue. I would have I to look feel, it up. I mean, I feel like he had a lot of 30 point triple doubles too, though, right? Yeah, but I mean, like Lucas scored 73 this year or 70. Okay. You know, so I'm just like, yeah, Russ was doing some crazy athletic things because of young Russell Westbrook. But like Luca, you know, he has the old man game, doesn't have that hop. But the step backs, the, the fix. He's got the old man game at 20. What, how old is he? 23? He's like 26 now, I think. He's been in the he league for like five 50. years. He looks like he's 50. <laughs> I mean, I guess being tall kind of ages you automatically. Let's see. Or Russell playing Westbrook. In your, uh, playing in the Euro League since you're. 12 or whatnot. Since you were 12 and smoking cigarettes with the other guys on the, the team. <laughs> you know, when you're on the team bus. Nah, there's a bunch of dudes that still smoke on like like on those teams. But yeah, I can only imagine, man. I was just like, but he's been like, I was like, how we really think about it. It's like, how could that first pick in the draft that year? Well, I get it because Aiden, they need it the size. But still, even then, I mean, like, if you're winning championships and MVPs professionally at 17, 16, then you're probably pretty right, good. Right, right, right. And how are, you, but they yeah, were, how, are you not, how are you not overlooking this dude and saying that he's going to get beat? He's never, uh, we were, I was talking about this with Keenan Womack uh, the other day on Chaos. Today. Oh, Keenan. Um, how, are right. you, how are you going to give a stab at Luka Doncic when he's playing against physical men and saying that he can't keep up with the NBA talent? Like yeah, a, like a a college player can, you know what I mean? Yeah, when exactly. Going, when we just seen with Zach Eady, um, Zach, I thought Zach Eady struggled a good bit against you know a, what a, a a top five uh, pick with uh, Klingon. Is Klingon is Klingon top five for you? Shoot, I mean it's not exactly a strong draft class, so yeah, he's definitely a lottery pick. But I mean, is he? A yeah, he's going to be in the lottery. Got the height, got the physicality. I you know. I, everybody keeps on thinking that Edie's going to be. I mean, somebody's going to give him a run because of his size. Uh, but I mean, correct. but he's not going to be able to defend anybody. Too slow. Too yeah, slow. like way, way too slow. Too like, slow, and uh, like you got to put good, you got to put balanced meat on. You know what I mean? Uh, when you're in the NBA, you, you're going to have to put a frame on. You, um, you're still kind of a stick, in my opinion. Your your weight's down, and when you put more weight on, you're even going to get slower. So. Um, I don't know, but again, he's a uh, what did what did Keenan give the comp that Keenan give was an Ennis Canner. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that, but not as athletic. Liability at the rim for as big as he is, just an absolute liability. Just a just a ole ole defense. Um, okay, I'm going to say you were correct though, real quick. Wags, 31 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. Uh, for Russell Westbrook during that MVP season, I felt like that's what he averaged. Like I felt, yeah, but Lucas averaging thirty four. Okay, okay, got MVP. Yeah. I have to do you my part. I have to do my part. You got me. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, they're playing the Clippers in the first round, so that should be a great series to watch. Kawhi, PG thirteen, Russ against Luca, Kai, who's the new Luke Mavs? West, though, like that's uh, that's the main question. Oh, like, who gets in? Who's like in. The Warriors the probably depends on how it depends on how LeBron's feeling too. I mean, if the Lakers can get into the play-in tournament, they they might have a chance. Lakers are in play. Lakers will be in. I think Lakers will be in the play-in. But I'm like, I really feel like the Warriors. You know, just because Sacramento, Sacramento done. Oh man, they shouldn't. I mean, Sabonis. So if if Luka Doncic wasn't playing as good as he is right now, I mean, Sabonis so is having a. All star like year didn't get an all star selection, but his stat line, if you look it up, is ridiculous. That guy really is like the more athletic second coming of his old man. Because you remember how good our Venus was, even at an old age, after the knees were gone, because he could yeah. finally come over here because the Iron Kernan had finally fallen. And I remember, <laughs> well, I remember that game in college where he takes David Robinson to That's school. Not man. Why? That's not why he couldn't come over. Are you serious? Yeah. He is was that a Soviet. Really why? I never knew that. Is that really why? Yeah, yeah. I was like, why are you laughing? I was like, that's totally true. Yeah, remember, Soviet players weren't allowed to be professionals outside of Russia. <laughs> I thought you were just joking around, man. No, nah, man. That's why we didn't have all those Russian hockey players for so long. No, I... <laughs> <laughs> the exodus of them in the 90s because they were finally free to become professionals here. You got me on that one. Yeah, me. man. They got a Pizza Hut and everything. Remember the the 
Globetroff, Gorbatroff, yeah, Gorbatroff commercials in Pizza Hut. Yeah, back in like yeah. 1991. Holy hell, man! Yeah, yeah dude, we're old now. That's what I happens. Get I gotta ready. I gotta get ready to take. I just got. I just saw the text pop up. We gotta get ready. She goes. Yeah, ready? man. I hear that. No, we're having a fun time. We're closing it down. Almost ready. Almost ready. <laughs> um. Anyways, let's let's shut it down. All right. So I think for for me with the West here, I'd like to think that Sacramento's done. Um. I'd like to think that going into it, it'll probably be, hate to say it, L.A. Lakers. L.A. Lakers. And probably your Warriors. (sighs) Battling it out for it. You know, it's just kind of like the Mike Tyson thing. The old man has one more thing to get off their chest, and that's like the Warriors right now. I'm just like, Draymond's going to be kicking people in the scrotum. Steph is going to be hitting threes. They got to figure out what they're going to do with Clay Thompson. Do you play him? Do you not play him? Because that's kind of he's been the issue right now. He's, he's got to remain he's done. on the bench. He's got to remain on the bench still. Um, he's done. He, man. You were, I hate he, to say he, it. You know, I got to give you your roses. I thought that Clay still had a couple more years in him. He was he was done a year ago. Yeah, you man. Know, I hate to say it, but you know, after that after that injury, he was done. He he just was never the same player. He should play um, on the big three. I want to say that the. You know that if Embiid comes back, gives somewhat of relevancy to the 76ers, but the East, like unless you're unless you're Boston, you really I don't think you're competing with the West. The, the mean, West, is, it, they're just too too powerful. Yeah, too and I mean they got Jason Tatum. You know MVP mentions also, but everybody's matter. just it don't, even, it don't even matter. But it the team is so good too. Their team's fantastic. They play excellent defense, but when you are Pacers, might surprise a few people. But that's about it. Or, or, or could the West beat the hell out of themselves so bad, and in you know Boston kind of just cruise in the East to where they're that's my fear. Reserved, uh, yeah, like Boston gets a couple of sweeps before they have to get into some dog fights, and then you have teams well, that would like be a like a grounded out series, like that. Really, really, not too many contested series. You know what I mean? Whereas mm-hmm. everybody in the West is going to seven games. Oh, like, I already man. see it, man. Like overtime, double overtime, game sevens. Guys are cramping up, playing with injuries, and Boston's just sitting down, fresh, getting ready to take on the finals. Yeah, that's a real concern too. But I, you know, they're going to have the best of the best possible, especially for the playoffs. Everybody spends a little extra money. They're going to have everybody kind of mentally focused in because this is when the basketball gets really good, you know, playoff time. So I, everybody's super focused. Yeah, yep. we're talking about playoffs. Uh, we also, you know, playoffs, we got uh, Dallas is, or Dallas. You're, you're in stars the stars. Are, your, your stars are absolutely uh, division champs. Division champs. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Uh, I still like the I still like the avalanche out of the West. Um, As you should. Boston, Boston. Boston oh, they're the team to be in the East. They got real two really good goalies. Um, and it, it the rotation kind of reminds me of Washington's rotation. Uh, when when Washington won it back in 2018, was it 2018? Yeah, 2018. Yeah. Um, when Washington won that. Um, hey, at least you got to see Stanley Cup rather recently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? For the first one, um, hopefully it's not the only one. So. And that's what I say as a Dallas Cowboy fan, you know, uh, 1995, three in as a kid. I was just like, ah, oh, this is going to be going on forever. Cowboys winning. That's enough for me. Enough for me. <sighs> All right, we're going to shut it down, though, guys. Hopefully you guys get out there to uh, the Baldwin Acres location to see my friend Satish and Tina out there for um, pick sports gear. I'll be out there. Maybe you can see me in a nice little pickleball gear. Um, go out there and get yourself a paddle and, you know, maybe play us, ourselves a, a friendly exhibition, have ourselves a drink or two. Um, and going out there and have a pickleball match. Uh, anyways, man, for everybody at Texas Sports Unfiltered, uh, thank you for watching the Wagner Wire, and thank you guys um, for checking us out on the Coda text line as well if you were mobile, man. We'll see you down there at Boonwin Acres on South Lamar, man, from 12 to 5 for Pick Sports Gear. Um, for Smash and for myself, you guys have a great remainder of the rest of your Sunday, and you guys know the drill, man. Live it, love it, learn it, get the dub, level up, and enjoy the ride. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Later. Mm